Drazoeth the Ashen isn't just one of the best Chaos Dwarf Lords, he's managed to become one of my favourite Lords in the entire game. He's an absolute beat stick of a Lord, a great caster, and he's part of a really fun and strong faction in the Chaos Dwarfs. What better way to celebrate him than by beheading my favourite character in the entire game, Imric, and we're going to do a perfect 20 turns. And the best thing about it is that I can show not just a great way to start militarily, but also the way the economy works. We've eliminated Tretch Craventail, we've eliminated Imric, and now we can quite easily secure this frontier and then get Flayed Rock. From here we can secure this frontier, even wipe out the vampires and befriend Nurgle, whatever we want to do. But the biggest threat we will have is the dwarfs here and of course Grimgor Ironhide. But we're more than in a good situation to sort this out because our economy is awesome. For those that don't know, you can get excellent mileage on your raw material production through marble, and iron and as you see here this start guarantees you three of these buildings and if we look here we are already in a position where we almost have enough raw materials to upgrade the capital we can already upgrade this building and these will give you an absolute stockpile of both raw materials and armaments so let's get into this now one of the fun things we're going to do with this particular campaign is we're going to try to do most of it only by auto resolving our battles and this is in a way a demonstration to see a please fix the goddamn auto resolve on the easy difficulty difficulties no worries, that should be easy, but on Legendary, very hard, make us fight the battles. Chaos Dwarfs do perform very well in Auto Resolve, so start your very first turn, march up, and we're just going to Auto Resolve this first battle, and then we're going to attack the capital. Take the labor when you can, you will eventually go through it all and take the building. Auto Resolving again, it's not too bad, and this first one we're going to make an Outpost. Now the reason for this is you typically want to go much more heavier in outposts than factories. When in doubt, go for outposts and then eventually use that stockpile of raw materials to start converting to armaments. But in your first province, for any Chaos Dwarf Lord, always have a tower, a factory, and an outpost. One of each, right? The reason being is they all have this drill building, which produces both armaments and raw materials, so you'll get that leverage there. Now that you've built this, your first building will be raw materials building nothing in the capital and of course upgrading to get Route Marcher and Burning Wrath and of course increasing our mobility on our Infernal Castellan. Now for research it's very very tempting to get the increase in your labor post battle but instead we're going to do a trick here we're going to get more heroes on the battlefield quicker so we'll get Tor's Tower we want to get an extra Demon Smith Sorcerer and an extra Bull Center Torok. Finally, it's important that we do get Gordas Backstabber as soon as possible, so build the Hobgoblin Mustering Camp in your capital and end your turn. Turn 2, we have our quest to get Gordas, and we're going to move Destroy. right to the very, very edge of our territory here, and we're going to hire three archers. Now, if you're fighting this on the battlefield, I would definitely get the Dwarf Warrior instead. Get one unit of those to help hold the front line, because it'll be a bit flimsy. These easy fights, but... A bit of extra frontline holding is nice to have. Upgrade your outpost and end your turn. Just a quick reminder guys, if you are enjoying the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out. Ask any question in the comments, I answer everything. And if you'd like to talk strategy, feel free to join the Discord. Turn 3, let's complete our first province and take the Darkhold. And lo and behold, we can do this again by auto resolve. We'll lose a couple of slaves, who cares? There we go. It's the quickest walkthrough in history. And we built an outpost already, so we want a factory here. Now, outposts are nearly always more useful than factories in these early stages because you need raw materials, and outposts also provide gold. But what does a factory give besides armaments? It gives you a defensive perimeter because a factory will have towers to help defend. Now, on this border, we are bordering Imric, and at one point or another, hopefully we strike him first. But he could also strike us first. So just in case he does, having towers in this frontier settlement will help us at least really rip his army apart. So uh, with that, now we'll be doing some recruitment. So let's use the recruitment edict to lower our cost by 20%. And we have now Tretch. He's our first target and we want him because he has the iron mine here as well as a marble quarry in his other settlement. So. Sorry Tretch, you got some good real estate, we're going for you. But first, let's see if we can get some money out of you first by goading you into thinking we're nice guys and we're going to join the war that he's currently engaged in which is this singular settlement here so it's really going to cost us nothing at all. Get what you can out of him and of course buy yourself three more Goblin Archers. Turn 4, let's upgrade the Darkhold to Tier 2 
Uh, this will also make it more defensible. If we do get attacked, we're going to move Drazok just up to the border here. And we're going to hire our last two goblins. And also hire a Dwarf Warrior. Always get the shielded version. You need that line holding. Now, before you end your turn, we're doing another trick here. We're going to hire ourselves a Fire Mage. Uh, get the best trade that you can get. This looks pretty nice. Doesn't matter, but you need to have a Fire Mage. Remember, Drazov has the Law of Hashut. Fire and Hashut typically have you covered. Having one caster of each in any army will do all the damage you possibly need. Drazoth, make sure you work your way across Get Ashstorm, and eventually you really want to put points in Flames of Asgoth. He gets some really great buffs to that spell. End your turn. Turn 5, and this is a big one, starting off with the fact we have just unlocked Gordo's Badstabber. Make sure you get him into your army. Very important. And that is why we got our 8 uh, Hobgoblins first, before we hired any Dwarf Warriors. Now the order we do this is quite important, so move your Secondary Lord up to the border as well. And go to the armaments and make sure you get another two Dwarf Warriors. I know that seems heavy heavy handed. You're better off with blunderbusses, they are a better unit, but we don't have time for that. We're going to go in and have a pretty tough battle, whether you fight it manually or auto resolve it. You'll want this extra power. Dwarf Warriors do quite well in auto resolve. Honestly, you'll be able to get both of these unlocked before you can really hire one when you do this build. So you just want both of those as soon as possible. Make sure you hire two more units, uh, basic units. You may need to put a couple of them in your secondary lord, move him up and start working towards burning head. With your castellan, keep on increasing that campaign movement and your main key ability with Gordas Backstabber is replenishment and then once level 5, get all of these upgrades to increase your hobgoblins and when possible, increase Gordas's melee defense because he's actually a pretty good fighter. Oh no, I didn't consider the fact that I had my new lord way too far ahead, I should have had him behind the settlement. Ah. Learn from that, don't make that mistake. So he's ambushed so my troops can't reinforce, which is sad, so let's see if we can save him. It's no longer a perfect 20 turns. Uh, yep, we ran away, but we get to live, which is nice. So we've just moved back, and he has both of his remaining armies here, we'll finish them next turn. Turn seven, so Clan Helheim have fallen, which means Imric's completed his province, so we need to hurry up because uh, we're the next most obvious target for him. So looking here, he has two more armies. We need to move our secondary army into reinforcement range so he gets the experience and of course attack with Drazoth. All right, so they know that they're outmatched from this. When you attack them, having them push in the direction that you're aiming to move is always a really great advantage. So we're going to move our reinforcing army just up here, close between the two of them. And they can only retreat once, so this first time we eliminate this army. Make sure you get Burning Head. And we'll send this guy down to fetch this army. Auto resolve. Again, we have not fought a battle yet. Alright, so we uncover the settlement here. We're going to hold the siege down and bring our reinforcing lord up so he gets the experience from tagging along. So just getting up here as close as he can at attack. And of course, this is basically an auto resolve campaign. Auto resolve, we lost nothing, we got a bunch more labor. And now we take the tower. Now, here you have a choice that you can make. I am choosing to bring this up to tier 2. Now, this is something you should only do late game normally. Normally, I never do this. Just take it and build it up. But getting it to tier 2 will allow us to build heroes sooner. And that will increase our power sooner. We have a lot of hostiles around, so heroes will help us really punch up. So, we're foregoing getting an extra perk on the tower sooner. But there's only really two there that we need. I've only ever seen them beat me to one of those one time. So we're rolling the dice here and we're going to build a tier 2 settlement. Now that we've succeeded here we can get rid of these uh, basic units, hire 2 or 3 goblin archers and the idea is we'll pass them to this lord here and they are going to head south around this flank whilst this one heads south to take the fight to Imric. Build the gold structure here to just increase our income. Turn 8. You will now get this quest battle. It's just quite simply just defeat 8 armies. Really great, it'll give us even more Conclave influence. So, what are we going to do? Let's take this uh, Mount Silver Spear because it has a Marble Quarry, an excellent resource for us to exploit. And we are going to take away three of these archers into this uh, army here. And we're going to send this army down here because we have a, a Rebellion, a Bruin, and it's only one turn away. So, we need to get this guy down here as soon as possible to aid with that. We'll force march him down there. 
Drazworth is now free to move up here, but let's always scout. Scouting pays off. Cool. Let's go discover this. It will be the last remaining stronghold. Auto resolve and a faction destroyed. And we're building a factory here, not because we need one, but because of the walls, it's more defensible. Just a raining Drazoth, he'll get the Flames of Azagor and eventually Arcane Conduit, but his unique line is quite tasty as well. It's one of our heroes unlocked, let's unlock the other one here. We need 250 armaments to unlock the buildings that will get us these heroes. One turn away. Get excited. Back to your capital in the Sentinels. Upgrade your uh, building there to get even more raw materials coming in. We're in a good spot. Let's end the turn. And last of all, give yourself the control edict. Slow down those rebellions. Turn 9 and we finally have the rebellion. It is attacking our settlement here. Let's defend it, and this is the one fight you have to fight on the battlefield. No way around this one. And on the battlefield, we'll start over here, but what we're going to do is, is use this narrow pass here as a choke point. We're going to place Archer, Archer, and our blunderbuss up in front here, and this is our main dam damage dealing core. Let's call that number four, and we'll have a melee unit here, a melee unit here, and of course one more here. In reserve, let's keep our sneaky gets, and around the flanks here, Further in reserve, let's use our uh, laborers. Now this army is random, sometimes they'll have a hell cannon, other times they won't. If they don't have the hell cannon, they'll probably come marching straight for you. Either way, hold alt with left click and drag your formation back here. We've at least got some cover down here, but we're going to use our sneaky git here. Remember he's got shroud, they can't see him. We're going to go all the way around here and chill back here and hopefully we can bait out that hell cannon, everyone else away from it, and then we'll smash the hell cannon. Ah, uh, didn't do shit. Ah, uh, tried to bomb it for a bit of fun, it didn't do anything. That's alright, we didn't need it. Okay, so the hell can is starting to shoot. Let's move around so it can't hit us. Oh. This is good. We're basically stalling the hell cannon so we don't get hit by it. So we want the rest of the army to approach and engage before the hell cannon does. So what you want to do is tie a unit up like this and then use your blunderbuss to hit them in the flank and ah, uh, they will never recover. Ever. Oh man, look at that. Alright, we're just going to move these guys back away so they're not getting shot. Remember to use your bar mobility really will help you uh, secure that win. And that is the only battle that you'll have to fight on the battlefield. So force march the secondary army here, we're just going to finish off the rebellion. Now with that battle won, we no longer need the gun, and we also no longer need our goblin building. Uh, run your primary army down here, it'll help keep the public order a little bit under control for the next few turns. But you now have the space to get this building. You want your bull centaurs and your bull center torox in your army, they're going to help smash the high elves. Now in the dark hold we can get this building which will increase the raw material output. Let's take out this uh, last rebellion, we could do it with the garrison but why not get a little bit more experience. Fire sorcerer for the win and now that rebellion is gone. Take the gold because the labor was quite low. So we're going to station him in this province to help keep everything out of control. Now you should have enough uh, labor to make sure both of your workforces are doing great, producing the most amount of raw materials as possible. You'll have some spare, so let's use it to quickly complete our bull centaur building, and this will allow us to hire two bull centaur torox. Choose the two best traits or the ones that you think suit you the most. You can't go past physical resistance. Yeah, stats are good. It's time to start taking the fight to Prince Imric. Move to the edge of the territory here, and we can't afford our great torox yet. So we want this because this will really help us fly around the enemy archers that the high elves have. This army setup we have is excellent for most things. Sieging, really great against Skaven, it's got an impenetrable front line, but it is going to be weak against high elves. And why is that? Because it is an archer centric army with shields. We are doing a high elf style formation against high elves. Never ever try to beat someone at their own game. We don't have enough armaments to make more Chaos Dwarfs, otherwise we could use a heavy infantry force to smash through their arrows and take them out. 
We don't have that yet. Currently, we have to rely on archers. So how do we get around this? We need cavalry or a secondary army to come around behind them and smash them. So the bull centaur Torox, as well as this bull centaur. So let's get them on the field. We can't afford it. So we now speak to Greasus Goldtooth. He is someone we would rather have on side than not. He's at war with some dwarves over here. I really don't mind about that. And that will just get that relationship ticking up a little bit. Let's try hiring again. And we can get... I love bull centaurs, but for now, just get the great Taurus. We don't have the time to hire them. And they're a little bit too expensive. We will get them. We'll actually get a couple of them, but not yet. It's overkill for now. Last up, we're going to upgrade Mount Greyhag to level two. The reason being is level two outposts are excellent. With outposts, you want to build wide, lots of level two ones because you can build resources as well as gold. Factories, on the other hand, they are really great to build tall. Let's keep the money coming in and end the turn. Turn 11, and we have just finished our technology to get ourselves a second demon sorcerer. So let's build a building that will allow that. We have 250 armaments, the prerequisite for all of these early tier buildings. We're going to build that, and now we can get two of those. Great stuff. Let's have a look at their balance of power. Your attempt. So it's basically the same as us. So let's move up. And see what we can see. So first of all, <laughs> let's have a look with our bull centaurs. Let's move up to our 25% maximum so we can adopt ambush stance if we choose. Which I will choose to do. Uh, let's move up bull centaur 1, bull centaur 2. And we'll just sit on the edge of the border there just in case they do attack. And hopefully we can land an ambush. But it's really unlikely that he'll attack just yet. But he's only got one army there and we can easily smash that and easily in auto resolve as well. That would be a hard fight to fight on the battlefield though because uh, they're basically better at what we do. We're now gonna move our second lord down here. Hop in ambush stance and get as close as you can. And just to make sure we never run out of cash, we will build the income building there and we will get another tower here soon. Make sure you get Call to War, plus four melee defense on your basic inventory. Incredibly valuable. Turn 12, let's get him before he ever suspects anything. Let's do it. Is he at war with anyone? No, well then it was probably going to be us very soon anyway. So we besiege him. Oh, that does suck. Ah, oh, well. Run them down. Let's auto resolve this. It will really hurt our army, but why not? Like I said, we're doing this without fighting anything. That's what we wanted to do. And when in doubt, just get an outpost. And we will get more raw materials. We have the money to spare. And let's just get a few extra laborers. We'll get the Orc Warriors because the High Elves do have some armor that we can cut through. Tearing Hearts. And I would love to get a barrier on top of uh, Drazor. So that's Imric's biggest army already destroyed, so he's not curtailed yet though. Do not do not write him off too early. There's a caravan here. You can decide what you want to do. Why not? They're a minor faction, so I don't like to attack the major factions. I like to keep my head down and attack the minor factions. Or we could join Greasus' war. So let's, mate. All right, cool. He's crossing past our capital. So we can get some reinforcements for an easy auto resolve. Make sure we accept new labor because we will make this a province where we are producing some resources. And now it is time to start building our first marble. Looking here at tier 3, this will give us even more raw materials. And what's unique about these buildings is the amount of workload required to produce said materials is very, very efficient. And we will upgrade this to tier 2 because we can use that second slot for some gold. Turn 13, use one of your heroes to move a little bit closer and see what you're dealing with. Well, it doesn't seem much. Alright, let's march out. Our secondary army a little bit closer and let's attack so we will siege and then join let's get out with our bull centaurs right, they got a full stack there but it's nothing we can't handle we can now also start putting points in the tower so there's two that you want to get first one is the armaments buff the other one which i think is more important is raw materials because this will help build your infrastructure Let's take their capital, and now the Knights of Caladores are monumentally screwed. Take their tower, and then build the gold building there. 
and feel free to knock down that goblin building because you just don't need it right now. Around this point, it might be a good idea to start investing in armaments. The problem with them is that they use a lot, so that's 32 per turn. That's literally a quarter of our armaments. If we had some tough fights, I would throw these on, but we can beat these guys quite comfortably. So I would hold off for at least another 10, maybe 20 turns before bothering with armaments because you just don't need them. These upgrades are really not necessary. Just keep on building up your infrastructure. Raw materials, build up your economy first, and then do your military. Ah, uh, damn it. This hasn't happened before. Hopefully, this doesn't bite us too badly. We need to make sure they don't take our capital. So we need to work out where he is. He's almost certainly got his last army just down here. So let's use this bull centaur. Okay, he's got two armies there. We do have a rogue... Uh, army. Let's stay the course. Let's run this army up here just so we have someone defending. We'll eventually be able to... You can underway from here to there and take that. My original plan uh, for this campaign was to actually do this first. I thought, let's get the economy sorted. Then we'll do that. Uh, also, this will bring us into contact with a whole bunch of other crap, but we'll deal with that. Let's move down here. Alright, we're going to dismiss one of our laborers. And, cool. Oh, shit. All right, we've got to fight this on the field. So on the battlefield, they start with a very small and weak army right here. So I'm going to send my Bull Centaur, as well as uh, we've now got Drazoth, on this Battle Taurus here. And they are going to go smash this army, kill the Lord, and then destroy their troops. Meanwhile, this our main army is going to push up. And in this canyon here, they are going to ambush these guys and just absolutely eviscerate them. Hopefully, the speedy units here can rendezvous and uh, meet them in time for the party. So we're going to move these guys up. Hold the control to tilt the way we want, and just up here, so let's keep them pinned. Now we are bowling these elves apart. Oh, this is not going to be pretty for them. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. Sorry to do this to Emmerich. There we go. The high elves really can't do much of this. We've pinned them, prevented them from moving. We've made this now into our fight. Exactly what we needed. Oh man, there's nothing they can do. And now we need our missile units to aim a bit further down the back so we don't get any friendly fire. Alright, and one thing about uh, the Laura of shoot, overcasting is really, really great. Works really well. Here we are. Oh. oh, shit. That was a massacre. Oh, my God. God damn, that is a lot of dead elves. Not sure that was a close victory, but uh, yeah, sure. Why not? And this we can resolve. Cool. Now, I don't plan on having any fronts here, so an outpost is a safe bet. Now we can get an increase in raw materials faction-wide. That spell we just did that we kicked ass with, we can now cast it cheap as chips. We can now, at level 10, max out our replenishment. And, of course, we can max out our mobility. For your bull scent or torox, I do like to get uh, maximize the uh, melee defense to get them to hold the line. Then this, we're going to send this other bull scent or torox up here to help with the invasion of these uh, ogres here, but also... We now have our Sorcerer Tower completed, so we can get two mages. We're going to get one of them to be a Fire Mage, and this one will be the one that joins Drazoeth. Next, we'll get Hashut, and this can join our Fire Mage. Now, we don't want to increase armor production just yet, because we need more raw materials to upgrade our capital. So at this point here, we want to be going very heavy on outposts to get more mines for more, more, for more raw materials, but also they'll give you more gold. So... Outposts all the way in this early stage. We're also going to upgrade this Mount Silver Spear here because it's right on the border of the regular dwarf. So keep your eye on their balance of power because he will eventually get bored. So just make sure he has an enemy. Right now he's got several enemies. That's great news for us. And we'll upgrade this even though it's a bit on the periphery, a little bit vulnerable. I do want that extra gold from the mine. Now, before you end your turn, once you've built your sorcerers, I know that sounds odd, trash the building. All it can do for you now is 2% research rate. Not enough to care. Don't worry about this. You've got two sorcerers. Look after them, and you won't need this building. 
Oh, this guy's just declared war on us. That's fine. He looks pretty screwed anyway. I really don't know why I did that. Turn 15, as for research, we can start looking at this unique military tree here. 5% less upkeep, all armies. We've got a bit of an annoying thing. We've had to send our secondary army up here because of this. Normally, you'd have it free around here, and you could take this. It's going to take us an extra turn, so that makes me a bit sad. But hey, everything else is going really well. See the big picture here. Sit here. Go and ambush dance. Yeah, bugger it. Just move up here in case he wants to dart across that way. And now let's investigate down here. So move down less than half of your movement so you can make your way back. Okay. Is this all they have? Double check their balance of power. That is probably all they have. So if we load this full of units, we can probably win. Now let's build back here where we knocked down the sorcerer building. We're now going to get some artillery. So now it's time to start saving up some raw materials to get these buildings up to where they need to be. I just realized that I've forgotten this entire time to do the caravan. So I've sent it here to Castle Drakenhof. I've just sent a bunch of armaments for some gold, but mainly what I want there is an item that will help you uh, get some regeneration. If that doesn't work, go to Black Crag, another excellent item, and then the Wizard Cal's Palace will give you some extra campaign movement. Now for the second tower ability, this is the one you want extra armaments every single turn really great so you usually will get these we, right we spent some of our influence getting that first building up to tier two we're still okay all right so we're going to move our units back into this army to help defend if anyone does come this way and other than that we're looking pretty good sometimes we'll get the offer of a dilemma which will give you one of the different currencies conclave influence is very difficult to turn down because it's probably the hardest to get unless you're really really broke and sometimes you need labor. Okay, you sometimes need more of them, but let's just go Conclave Influence for now. Now, we have a, another caravan here. Who does it belong to? And as usual, unless it is a major faction, just take the caravan. If they're a minor faction, then probably. Now, keep in mind, if you fight normally, you can chase down the captives and you'll get even more captives than you normally would. Let's finish off the Knights of Kalidor. Auto, and that is Imric and his gang finished. But now we plan on this being the furthest to the west we're looking to go. So just to be safe, I will throw up a factory. Although right now we certainly need more outposts. But we're playing on legendary. I don't want to get caught. Now we could use some of our raw materials to upgrade more of our buildings. But instead, we really need this up to tier 3 and then this up to tier 3. So we're saving those raw materials up for the benefit of our economy. Now that I'm pretty confident we're not going to get attacked here anytime soon, I'm going to knock down this uh, goblin building and we'll build a regular barracks so we can get some more blunderbusses on the field. No threats. So let's join up and you can train our troops. And finally, we want to reduce the construction. So if you're not recruiting, do everything you can to reduce the constructions. Turn 17 and we've been besieged here. They finally came at us, so we're going to force march. And that scared them off, so yeah, they won't be coming around here anymore, but yeah, we'll uh, make sure we finish them off and then we'll take their final territory. And pretty much we take that, we take that, and I mean, I'd say you can achieve all that by turn 20. This will get the vampires some eyes on you and they'll probably attack you. You can easily push them back, make a border there, ally with Nurgle or destroy him, and then take the fight to Thorgrim. Let's maximize our raw materials. There we go, that's our first marble mine. Now it's for Drasworth, let's go. <laughs> Underground to Pig Barter. So this is about to rebel, so what we'll do is we're gonna give it away. Who's neighboring it? Uh, it'll be it'll be Clan Moors, hopefully, because they're a major faction. So it's Bitter Bay, it's really, really high in Chaos Corruption, which is why it's not really working for us. Turn 21, I thought I'd do one more just to wrap these guys up, because we can. So we underpass here the last turn. Oh, they're not happy. They don't want to fight, but they're gonna. That's okay. Because I really need their funds this particular turn. Cool. And I will spend the influence to get that to tier 2. And I do want some artillery sooner than later. Alright, and there we have it. So turn, just turn 21 and we now have four provinces under our control. And we'll be able to take this, give it to one of these guys for some cash, whoever the highest bidder is. And then we'll hopefully have some military alliances 
willing to pull us into this inevitable conflict with the dwarfs. We have Clan Moors here as an ally. Well, we'll be able to make him an ally, I'm sure. And of course, we will get some hostility here for the vampires, but we can use that to quickly get some levels on Drazoth, smash them down, get an alliance with Kugath. He'll help us defend here and out there. We'll be able to get Clan Moors to protect from here, and then we'll just put all of our energy into here, wiping out the Dowie and taking our place rightfully at the head of the Dowie and the Dowie Tsar. That's it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please consider liking and subbing, and I'll see you next time. Let me know in the comments what you want next time.